I'll tell you what, I've got a really, uh, what I believe the Spirit of God has given me is a real uh, uh, defining uh, message for us today, and a very simple message. Uh, honestly, the only reason things have ever been, uh, been or appeared to be uh, uh, complicated uh, as it pertains to the things of God is because of religion. You know, religion makes things very complicated. There are uh, a lot of uh, uh, traditions of men, really, and that's what religion, religion is, you know. Religion is, uh, uh, is us trying to work our way into a position where we can get to God, and, and He already worked His way in a position to get to us. Amen. We don't, we don't have to get to Him, glory to God. He came to us, and He gave us an assignment, and, and He made it easy. But, but again, you, you have to have ears to hear what His Word says so that when you hear it, you don't try and complicate it. Because, you know, that's what we do naturally. We try and figure things out. We try to analyze things. I don't really, I don't really personally, uh, I really don't personally say that like that, but I don't say analyze like that. But that's what we do. We, we try to analyze things. We try and figure things. We try and reason things. Whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's a, a part of the, uh, the makeup of uh, carnal man, uh, I believe it is, to try and uh, use uh, his brain to to, uh, figure God out. Save yourself some time. Just believe what He says. Just believe what He says. Know that He says what He says because He loves you and He wants the best for you. And if you'll just do it, if you'll, hey, let's do something radical. Let's, let's like ap- approach Him as a little child. You know, isn't it amazing uh, how children learn a language? without a book. Isn't it amazing that they just hear what you say as little bitty guys, and all of a sudden, whatever that language is, they pick it up, and don't, they, don't, they don't stop and say, hey, hey, I, hey, I, I, what is, how does this work? <laughs> Well, how does this work, Mom? I'm Mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> we complicate the Word of God instead of just approaching it as a little child right. and saying, okay, this is what it says. And we're going to look at a few verses today that'll, that'll make that even more clear to you. I want to make a couple of statements first. Follow me or what? Like there's an alternative. Right. Follow me or what? Transitions happen, but following never changes. You know, uh, and I know there's some of you in the room that have some, have some years on me, but I got some years on most everybody, except those of you that have some years on me. And so those of you that have some years on me and, and the ones that I have some years on, there's a lot of us that have some years on you. And we recognize that there have been a lot of transitions in life that we've had to go through, a lot of changes. Hmm? And I'm just going to tell you from my perspective, I'm so grateful for the Word of God. Because I'm old enough to have gone through some transitions that uh, you really can't deal with until you get to them. But if you know that greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. If you know that what you do today with what you know to do where you are, then you're preparing yourself for where you're going and whatever has to be dealt with there. Amen. Changes transpire, don't they? Those of you. Now, they don't have to, they don't have to change prematurely. Okay? We, we, don't, have to, we don't have to go through transitions before it's time to go through the transitions. But when we do, we ought to be able to walk right through those darlings. We ought to be able to walk right through them. Huh? It should be just like taking another breath. It should be just like taking another breath instead of hearing that stuff. Well, you know, I mean, sit around in some places, thank God I don't have to. Sit around in some places where that's all people talk about are their issues, what they're dealing with. Well, pastor, don't you have issues? 
You know, really, I don't probably have near as many as most people do my age. But you know what? I didn't buy into that. I didn't buy into that genetic lie. I believe God's healing power, delivering power, prospering power works for those who actually confess it and believe it. I believe, I believe it works. Hallelujah. We're not moving fast enough. Let me move this next statement here. There are only two choices in life. Listen to this. I said there's only two choices. Okay? This makes it real simple. Now, it put some pressure on your flesh, but it makes it real simple. There are two choices. What are they? His way or the wrong way. It's only two choices you have. There's only two choices. His way or the wrong way. Hmm? You know, I heard people early on when we first pioneered the church, uh, uh, people, uh, you know, uh, and, and, you know, there was probably a time uh, early on that, uh, uh, that I was not maybe as loving as I should be, and, and maybe I, you know, appeared to be arrogant or, or whatever. That's really not who I am. You'd, you'd probably have to ask my family in order to know that for sure, but... Uh, that's really not who I am. But, you know, they, uh, they would say to me, well, you know, you act like it's your way or the highway. I said, I just got that from Jesus. I just got that from Jesus. Huh? Let's, let's look at a verse real quick. We don't have it on the overhead, but you can just go ahead and make note of it. Matthew 12, 30. Matthew 12, 30. He said, he that is not with me is against me. I mean, how... How hard is that to figure? And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So when he says there's something that we should do or we're responsible for, wouldn't that be the same as him saying, this is the way I want it done? This is what will please me? So what happens if we make a determination, I don't want to do that. Then we're not for him, are we? I just want to make it simple because I want us all to do better. That's right. Huh? And, I, and I'll tell you, I've, you know, I've got myself because, you know, you can't, nobody can make you do anything, but you have to make that decision to do it. Right. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm surrounded, very grateful that I'm surrounded with a, with a family who actually cut me no slack whatsoever. I, I even wanted to be more adamant about how I was going to say that. They cut me no slack whatsoever. Huh? I mean, if I was to look at how, how much slack they give me, I would think they didn't love me. If I, honestly, if I went by the slack they gave me, I would think, golly, don't you love me? But see, nobody loves me like God loves me. And listen, God doesn't cut you any slack. He tells you how it is, and he expects you to do it. And if you don't do it, I mean, he's still for you. He's not against you. He's not the one that will perpetrate problems and difficulties on your life, but he'll let you make that decision. But if you're for him, glory to God, confidence is gained. Trust is established. And every step you take, you become more confident about that relationship. And what does that do for you? It does for you what I said a while ago. It'll do for you when you reach transitions that you didn't know what were going to be like. When you get there, you don't think anything about them. That's right. Just walk right on through them. Huh? You passed your 40s. You know, for, man, my life began at 40. Yeah. Now, PK and I married when, when uh, we married when I was, uh, I was 32. But, but I saw my life beginning at 40, and uh, we pioneered the church when I was about uh, 43. So that's when, I saw my, that's when I saw my life. So 40, you know, that's a long time to wait. I could have said, dang, you know, I've jacked up a lot of years, you know. And then, of course, then there's Moses and Abraham who started when they were 80. Good Lord, I got seven years to go. I guess I'm still a pup. I'm still, probably still wet behind the ears, you know. So, you have to realize that you're not there, but He is. And when you do what you're supposed to today, when you're for Him today, 
Amen. That makes tomorrow easier. Yes. Glory to God. So again, you might make note of Matthew, Matthew 12, 30. Just take it, just take it for how it's written there. It'd be just like, well, it's like he told his, told, told his disciples. He, he said, if you love me, if you love me, if, if. My daddy used to say, that's the biggest little word in the dictionary. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And as I've told you, many of you realize that it, uh, every time I, uh, I'm, I mention that, I mention how, uh, how, uh, how PK, how, how Kathy's trained me in that over the years. She said, if you love me, you'll do what I say. <laughs> Husbands, that's a great, that's a great, uh, uh, you know, that's a, that, that's a great uh, 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 idea for you. Huh? If, if you love her, just tell what she says. She's not going to cause you any difficulties. Amen. She's your help meet. You need her. You know how I know you need her? God said, man shouldn't be alone. So go ahead and fess up to it. You shouldn't be alone. I mean, if you were by yourself, you'd be like the other animals you named. But with a wife that loves you, you got a chance. Amen. John 12, 26 If any man serve me, Jesus speaking, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. It's interesting. We're getting kind of a definition of what to to follow him means. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Hallelujah. The uh, Passion Translation says, if you want to be my disciple, follow me. And you will go where I am going. And if you truly follow me as my disciple, the Father will shower his favor upon you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To follow is to join as an attendant, to accompany, to side with, to become a disciple. You know, to, uh, to follow someone is not just taking a walk with them. It's not just taking a walk with them. To follow someone, uh, to follow someone uh, means that, uh, uh, that you're learning to serve them. You're, you're, you're realizing that uh, the learning and the serving you do is going to create who you're supposed to be. And most especially when it is the person of the Lord Jesus that you're following. And you know, really... If we would just follow the red letters, that would really, really, really make our assignment much easier. You know, there are things that the letters from Paul talk about and talk about our behavior and all those things, and certainly those need to be taken into consideration. But honestly, when we follow the Lord Jesus, we're going to find ourselves learning to live differently. Hmm? We're going to find out what serving looks like, because nobody served like he did. And he the one that said, you know, if you want to be great, you know, a lot of people want to be great. Maybe they don't necessarily articulate it, but on the inside, they want to be great. They want to do good. They want to be recognized. They want to be honored. They want to be all of those things. And we see right here that if we just follow him, learn from him, learn to serve him, we'll get all the honor, all the recognition, and everything we will ever need. Glory to God. Amen. You know, following him makes all the transitions in life very very, very easy. Second Corinthians five seventeen through 18. Here's some assignments that we can look at. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new in verse 18. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself. The Bible says that he was in Christ Jesus reconciling lost mankind. And all things are God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We've been given that ministry, every one of us. We're going to break it down, make it real simple. We're going to do about a 46-part message, huh? In about 30 minutes. Make it real simple for you so you can leave with something that makes things very clear to you and your assignment very clear to you so that no matter what, you're in or where you are chronologically, you will be able to walk out this transition in life knowing your assignment. So again, he said, and has given to us, 
the ministry of reconciliation. Every believer, every believer, turn to the person next to you. I don't care if they're 12 seats away. Every believer, huh? Is called to promote the Lord Jesus. Every believer. Every one of us are called to promote the Lord Jesus. Who he is and what he's done. Irrespective of what's going on around us. I don't care about all the darkness that goes on around us. Where, where, where darkness shows up, where sin shows up, grace much more abounds. I don't care what lifestyles, attitudes that other people have taken. I don't care who they vote in or vote out. I don't care the laws that they pass. You and I have one assignment, and we are ministers of reconciliation. We have been called to tell those who have ears to hear what God has done for them, that they need not live in bondage or addictions the rest of their life because the Son has made a way for them to be free. Glory to God. We have been called to focus on Him, and that's what happens when you follow Him. Yeah, you hear and you see things that are going on around you. And many of us, we've lived so many decades now, we see things transpire today that, that, that the world is now calling good that always have been evil. But yet now, they've called evil good. And we know that because people call evil good, evil will not depart from their house, from their business, hmm? from their nation, from their government. But you know what? Listen, let me, let, me, let me make this clear to you. When you know who's in you, those things won't affect you. I don't care what they do. I don't care how much they tax us. I don't care what they do. They can, they can, they can, call, they can call abortion okay. They can call uh, these things okay. They can call homosexual, homosexuality okay. They can do all of those things. But we know what the Word of God says. So we're not going to hammer them. We're not going to hammer the haters. We're ministers of reconciliation. You know, somebody that's going south may want to hear a message about what can happen if they go north. That's who you and I are supposed to be. The ones that talk about what he made available. We don't sit around, oh gosh, oh I don't know why those people are doing that. Oh, oh, that's so sick and that's so weird. What's been going, around, going on since day one? Ever since Adam and Eve committed high treason. That stuff's been in motion. It's been in motion. Sure, it's sick, it's perverted. There are all kinds of things going on. Heinous things that are going on. But do you think God stopped loving them people? I said, do you think God stopped loving those people? Oh, no. He stopped loving those people. Jesus' blood is still available for anyone and everyone who has not professed him as their Savior. That blood's still flowing. It's still on the mercy seat. Mercy seat. I said the mercy seat. Mercy, 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 mercy. It's on the mercy seat. It's not on the judgment seat. It's on the mercy seat. Hmm? There'll be no judgment until the last breath is taken. That's when that occurs. But you and I have an assignment. Every one of us, we're ministers of reconciliation. That means you, wherever you are, whatever you do, you always ought to have your reconciliation antenna up. Yes, that's right. You ought to always be ready to say something to somebody. Hmm? And, the, and the Father will make that clear to you. Amen. Revelation 5, 5.10, and we'll make this simple for you so we can divide it up real easy. In Revelation 5.10, and, ha- and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Not only in the millennial reign, but we're supposed to reign in this life. Right. Not get rained on. Right. We're here to reign. Yes. We're not here to be, well, you know, how, how you doing? Well, we're, you know, under the circumstances. No, we're not under the circumstances. We've been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Does that sound like under the circumstances to you? Well, you don't know my wife. She is not your circumstance. You don't know where you're seated. That's your issue. You don't know where you're seated. 
Now, she may not recognize where she's seated, but you need to know where you're seated. Glory to God. He's made us to be kings and priests in this life. Glory to God. Overcomers in this life. Huh? The head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. Blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. Huh? When you know where you are, then you won't have any problem with anybody around you because they can't affect who you are or where you are. Glory to God. Huh? Let's get this right. If you bought into all that religious, all that traditional stuff and all that card carrying and, and, and homo screaming and on and on. And if you bought into all that stuff, you bought into a lie. I can assure you the Lord Jesus didn't follow that principle. I can assure you when the woman caught in adultery and, sh- and was thrown in front of him, I can assure you he didn't say, you two bit ho, what are you? Get out of here. Drag this woman out of here and Where's the, where's the hoe that was with her? Where is that guy? He was supposed to be here also. Why did you just bring this chick? Was she with your son or what's the deal here? No, he didn't say any of that stuff. He just made it very, 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 very clear that there wasn't anybody there that was capable of stoning this woman. He also knew that everyone is one forgiveness away from a brand new life. They're one forgiveness away from starting a new life, glory to God. And I'm gonna tell you what, he's the same way today. They drug her up there. He said, well, uh, he looked up and he said, woman, where, where are your accusers? Where'd those genfos go? Where are those clowns? She said, master, master, they've, they've all gone. Neither, neither, neither. This is Jesus. Your Savior, if you're saved. This is what your Savior said to that woman. Go and sin no more. So we automatically know right there. And she knew too. She knew that adultery was a sinful activity to be involved in. Don't you, don't you think she did? How many of you know Jesus knew that adultery wasn't cool or fornication? or homosexuality, or bestiality, or any other number of things, gossip, backbiting, and all of the rest of the things that a lot of people do that create hell in their life. He knew, and he just said the same thing to you and I. If he had caught us gossiping, or backbiting, or whatever we were doing, he said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. See, that's what a minister of reconciliation does. He doesn't blow up because they're on crack or are on meth or they've had six unwed kids. That is not our call as the men and women of God. Our call is to give them one chance to hear the truth about the love of God and the freedom that he wants for every man, woman, and child in the earth. Amen. You cannot expect people to ever see him as good as he is until you tell him how good he is. And that's how good he is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, if you can't get excited about that, go and sin no more. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I haven't preached myself happy, but I'm excited. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's what he said. Do you know what would you say? Well, I know what you'd do. You'd talk. You'd call up your friends. Did you hear about so-and-so? She got, she got caught with somebody. Did you hear about it? Oh, I just think we need, I, I just called you. I didn't want to tell you. I, I just think we'd ought to pray for her. <laughs> Bull Tweeties. Huh? You're trying to throw stuff in her face. Jesus, where are your accusers? There are none. Neither, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Now, if they drug her up there the next afternoon, hmm, he'd probably just probably just said nothing. He'd have probably just looked at her. And that's what you ought to do too. Just look at him and say, you know, I don't know what happened. Yes, you do. 
Yes, you do. And then go to another candidate. Amen. You've sown the seed of the heart of God. Go and sin no more. No, I don't want to hear excuses. Well, you know, I wouldn't have done it, but, my, you know, my husband, no, I don't want to hear that. Huh? Or if you're, actually, they're a hoe and a hoette, but, <laughs> and it could be the guy. Well, you know, my wife, she just, you know, she just, no, it's not your wife's issue. Right. Yeah. That's no excuse. Right. That's no excuse. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's most certainly most certainly the case in a lot of people that really don't know what you and I know. That's why we shouldn't be like people that don't know. We should know what God's heart is. Huh? God's heart is to let them know that Jesus made a way for them to live a life free from the bondage of any level of sin. And let's be sure about something. Every sin brings the wages of death. Every sin. I said every sin. That's what Paul said. So he told the church at Roman, the wages of sin is death. I don't care if it's just backbiting. I don't care what it is. We're to be ministers of reconciliation. Amen. I got you excited now. Glory to God. Got six people are in it with me. Praise the Lord. We've been made kings and priests. It might be nine, maybe 10. There are two types of people in this life. Kings, which are marketplace workers who provide provision for the kingdom, and priests or pastors, full-time ministers or laborers who promote or preach the kingdom. Two kinds of people. Huh? It's either you in the marketplace or me behind the pulpit. Five-fold ministry gifts or the people that are in the marketplace. The kings are those that are in the marketplace. The priests or pastors, the five-fold ministry gifts should be the ones that do what I do and that study, pray, and love us enough to regurgitate what he tells me to say when you show up here Every service. Glory to God. Whether you like it or not. And sometimes I don't much like it. But the truth will always be the truth. And as I mentioned Wednesday night, listen, if something seems like, you know, they came to Jesus one time and he said, unless you eat of my, eat of my body and drink of my blood, you know, you've got, no, you've got no part of me. They said, whoa, whoa, this is a hard saying. And the Bible says a bunch of them left. And he didn't say, well, wait, wait, let me explain that. <laughs> no, I, I didn't know what I meant. I mean, no, hang on. Don't, uh, <laughs> I'm losing my congregation. <laughs> no, he didn't do any of that. And it's the same thing. But here's what you do. You hear something, it hits you right between the eyes. You've been a this all your life or a that all your life. And you're not sure about the place to start with. It hits you right between the eyes. Hmm? Well, what, you know, golly, huh? Well, I mean, I didn't, this isn't what I was taught in the Baptist church. This isn't what I was taught in the Baptist church either. But I thank God I found out there was more than what's in the Baptist church. And the Baptist church is a wonderful denomination. A wonderful denomination. But I'm going to tell you what, they don't know what we know. Or at least I can say this, they don't know what I know. And I'm not saying I know something that they can't know. I'm saying I do know some things that they don't want to know. Because you know what, when you find out things you don't know, then you got to make changes. And you know, when you make changes or transitions, not everybody follows the transition. As a matter of fact, you can get left out. But you know what? I'd rather be left out believing I know him and what he has to offer than I would be feeling good about a, a bunch of, around a bunch of people that don't feel good. Because you know what? If you don't know and continue to grow, you're never going to feel good. But when you know and and continue to grow, you're going to get incrementally better in every area of your life. So we see those two types of people. Listen, a king, an owner, uh, a worker in the kingdom isn't just a giver, but one who sees his or her assignment as being kingdom-minded, not me-minded. 
I, I want to. I want to be specific. I want to be specific, but you know, you you know, God doesn't want everything you have, but He wants your heart. There are kings, business people, employees in the house, in our house, in this place, who when the kingdom, the advancement of the kingdom, what God wants to do in the kingdom, the fact that he's building his church, which is first of all in us as individuals, families, and as a corporate body, then we understand that my assignment as a marketplace merchant or employee is every bit as important as my pastor's assignment. Because what I do increases our opportunity to promote the one who has promoted us. Glory to God. In 1 Corinthians 9, 13 and 14, do you know that, that, that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. In other words, my assignment, any pastor's assignment, is not to be a hireling. And I'm not a hireling. Huh? I mean, if I'm a hireling, I hired me. I hired me and, I hired me and, and Kathy. And made us PD and PK. But honestly, he's the one that called us. A hireling is somebody that looks at this as a job. Looks at you as a threat. As a giver or a non-giver. Hmm? As a hater or a baiter. But someone that's called by him looks at you in all of your value which is probably much more valuable than you see yourself because that's the way he sees you. See, we, we've, we've, we've been raised thinking that we serve a, a schizophrenic God, but that's not the truth. God loves, he loves you when you're at your worst. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, the Lord Jesus died for us. Now, if you think receiving him keeps you from never making a mistake. You don't understand that very well, do you? Either that or you're not saved yet. <laughs> That's right. So you maintaining your salvation is not based on your works or your behavior. Remember the word, listen, if you can't get saved by works, you couldn't stay saved by works. And some of you need to put that down. If you can't, you can't get saved by grace, you're saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works, not of works. Well, if works can't save you, how could works keep you saved? How could works keep you saved? Huh. What if you do something wrong after you get saved? Oh my God, your history. Not true. Because if you're saved, you're born again of incorruptible seed. See, he had to do that. He had to be incorruptible seed because he wanted to take it all on himself. We're saved because of him. Pure and simple. We're saved because of him. We're saved because of him. We're not saved because of us. We're saved because of him. Now, that doesn't give us a license to go crazy. Of course, people don't even need a license to do that. Some people keep going crazy anyway. But the point is, he was after your corazoncito. He was after that dead spirit. And when you sincerely called on him, then he took that dead spirit out of you and put the life of God in you. Your spirit man's good with him. You still may be a little jacked up around the edges. I don't know, you know, if you know any Christians like that, but I am. I mean, I do. (laughs) <laughs> we still got stuff to do. But our, our ability to be ministers of reconciliations is not based on our works. It's based on the assignment he gave us. Glory to God. Does that make sense to you? Amen. So we see right here, I don't do outside stuff. Paul, built, Paul did tents for a while. I thank God I don't have to be a tent maker. Because I'm not sure you can do it with a hammer and a screwdriver. 
I'm not, you know, I, I'm not thinking I could be a tent maker. And that was good and very commendable of him. But we see God's assignment right here. God's assignment right here is that there be provision in the house, and there has been, and there will continue to be, and it will increase because our vision and assignment will increase. Amen. We didn't arrive when we got to 700. We'll arrive when we see him. And until we see him, we want to keep pressing toward him. We want to keep doing all we can do. In other words, remaining in our assignment as ministers of reconciliation, regardless of our position. The commentary to this, I like to give you a commentary on it because we know it was, wasn't my opinion. Uh, this was a Jewish maxim or general truth or rule of conduct declared that if there was one among the people called by God, I'm going to tell you, that's a big deal right there. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, that's a big deal right there. That phrase, those three words, called by God. I'll guarantee you, I wouldn't have stuck this out if I hadn't been called by God. Huh? I wouldn't have stuck this out if it was about the money. Or I felt like I was doing something good for society. No, no, I believe that you have to be called by God in order for it to work the way God wants it to work. And that's what the commentator goes on. He, he said... The people called by God to study, please him, and instruct the people they should see to his support. That's the way it works. That is the way it works. Glory to God. Because you know what? Uh, as important as your assignment is, you know, my assignment's important too. Now, we're talking about to God. We're talk- when he calls somebody, it, you, know, you, know, you know, you ain't going to find a... Let's go on. A full-time five-fold minister lives off the word, not outside activities. Now, I know plenty do a lot of things, and, and I got nothing to say about that because I'm not them, I'm me. But I ain't got time to be jacking around outside doing stuff, honestly. I, honestly, I don't even have time. Don't, I don't do investments. I invest in the kingdom. I mean, it's got me up to 73, so from 32 to 73, all the years we've been married, and the 30 that we've been at the church. Man, he was always there. Why? Because he's with everyone who prepares themselves where they are. So that when the transitions come that they know nothing about, he'll be able to help them get right through them. Glory to God. One with a divided heart will be unable to fully fulfill their position. Hmm? You can't do it. Just like a businessman. Huh? Just like a businessman. Man, you can't, you can't have a divided, a divided heart when it pertains to your business. Huh? I mean, most businesses that are successful, you got to be on those darlings. Huh? You got to be on those darlings. Well, certainly the work of the, the work of the father, the work of the ministry, you got to stay on top of this, huh? You know why? The people. The people. And I'm not talking about the people being difficult. I'm talking about the people being precious. Yes. And you know, really, the only reason people are difficult is because they don't know how precious they are. Hmm? So they just gravitate to how they were raised or what's going on around them or how they've been treated. But you know, when you know how valuable and precious you are, man, that'll knock the edge off your meanness. Huh? That'll knock the edge off your meanness. You'll begin to look around and say, oh my goodness, I know that's not comfortable for them. I'm sure glad I got delivered from that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Both assignments, listen to this, both assignments are holy. Well, you know, if I was in the ministry full time, I, you know, I think it'd be a lot better. No, you don't belong in the full time ministry unless God calls you into the full time ministry. Huh? And that's not something you want to become. That's something that he's graced you with. You do not want to be in the full-time ministry unless you're called by God to be in the full-time ministry. Trust me. Now, I'm not trying to keep anybody out, but I'm telling you this. You don't want in. You don't want in unless you belong in. And you know what? 
when you belong in and you know it, you don't talk about it? Huh? It's a transition that happens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the only way you'd want it to happen. And you know, even the people that work, uh, uh, the, 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 that work uh, on staff, uh, those people, you know, uh, some of them recognize it and some of them, some of them may not. This is a call. Your job or your business, that's a, you're called to that. Do you think you're called to that just to, you know, buy another Escalade? You think you're, that's not why you're called. It's not why you're a businessman or a businesswoman. That's not why you're good at your craft or, 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 your, or your gift. That's not why you're good. You're good at that to promote the kingdom glory to God. Both assignments are holy, sacred, and carry the responsibility of the Father's business being their number one motivation. That means you get excited because your business is doing good. You get excited about you're doing better on your job because you can do more for the kingdom. I mean, you, you don't begin to just think about, you know, the minimum that you can do. You begin to think, I can do, you know what? Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed that, that like for years of our life, we just, you know, we just, you know, kind of just barely get along and we're able to do pretty decent things. And then all of a sudden, when we, when we begin to flourish, then we don't have anything extra to, to be a blessing to the other people or to the kingdom. Huh? We got all that extra money, all that extra cash. You ever think about that? Huh? It's supposed to work like this. You get excited about your assignment. Huh? You go from, you, you go from uh, uh, just uh, uh, barely getting along hmm? to make an ends meet. Huh? You go from not enough to just enough to more than enough. But you're still real cautious about your giving. Well, you know, we got to think about the future. We got to be sure we got enough saved. You didn't worry about that when you didn't have a pot or a window. You didn't have a pot or a window. And then all of a sudden you was excited, man, God, God wants to help me. God wants to be involved in my life. And, and now all of a sudden, huh? You're a bazillionaire. And now, man, you've moved over onto Careful Street. Well, you know, we're getting old. Well, did God not know we were going to get old? Did God not know that he was going to have to take care of you when you got old? Well, sure he did. Hallelujah, he took care of you when you were trying to break out. When you were honoring him back then. But now all of a sudden. <laughs> Aren't you glad God loves you? The, the father's business is not defined as me and you. Or us and them, but we. But we. You know, you may have had some pastors in the past that weren't for you, but I'm for you. And there are certainly some pastors that have had some people that weren't for them. And a lot of them have just fallen by the wayside. A lot of them good people. Maybe some of them deceived and really not in their right calling. But you know, nobody, man or woman, in or out of the church, deserves to be hated on. Yeah. Amen. You know, if the man of God is not right, what do you do? You find you one that is. You find you one that is. Hmm? You don't try and be the one that causes the one that you don't like to crater. Hmm? You're not part of an organization that's deacon-possessed. Deacons were never assigned to oversee the the men of God anyway. Right. They, were, they were assigned to serve tables right. to help the widows. I mean to help them with things that they should help them with. Yeah. We have a different assignments, but the same father and responsibility to honor him. Yes. Where we are in what we do with all we have. That's right. Hmm? Hmm? Right. Whether you're a whether you work on a backhoe, whether you work on a rig, whether you own a business, whatever you do, whether you're a pastor, whatever you do, we do it with all we have. We're getting close. First Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ 
and members in particular. The passion says you are the body of the anointed one and each of you is unique, is a unique and vital part of it. Hallelujah. Okay? You're either for him or against him. You're either in the marketplace or you're in the pulpit. But we're all ministers of reconciliation. Our call is to trust him all the days of our life. To not be moved by what could happen in the future or what happened to grandma and them. We're called to be led by the Spirit of God. And He is going to lead us to the Word of God. And He's going to make sure that we understand that He's got our back, He's got our front, and He's got both sides. And when that's the case, we don't come out of dark places into the light and all of a sudden act like we got to deal with darkness. No, we don't have to deal with darkness. Darkness has been dealt with. We don't have to prepare for darkness. All we have to do is walk in the light as He is the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two people. Two people groups, it's all it is, huh? And of course, there's a whole lot more in the marketplace than there are in the five-fold ministry. Of course, I don't know, in our nation might be different. I mean, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you know what? He's real good at that. Lord has tubs of mercy. Amen. Amen. And we all want to be sure that we're uh, not too prideful to throw ourselves on his mercy and to be sure that we know that he, just like the adulterer or adulteress, either one would tell us, go and sin no more. A couple of statements will close. A child of God, a follower of the Lord Jesus, a blood-bought believer, or one genuinely a new creation is either all in or all out. Okay, you go ahead and stretch now because that's some growing area right there. I mean, if you're either for him or against me, or against him, huh? then what are you then? You're either all in or you're all out. Well, pastor, you know, gosh, dog, I don't, whew. Right now, I'm, whew. And it's working on me too. I mean, I mean, what is that saying? That's just saying, uh, I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to check on myself. I need to, you know, you can be all in right now and maybe not look as all in as somebody else. But if, but if you feel good about your all in right now, then say glory to God. I'm, I'm all in. But then you also qualify it. You say, you know, but you know, if something else comes up, if there's another step I need to take, if there's something else I need to separate myself from, then I'm going to do that. Because when I know that he wants me to do something that I haven't done yet, I'm going to be all in. I'm going to step over and take that on also. Glory to God. Amen. That's what being all in is. You know, a new believer doesn't know what all in looks like. But you know, some of us that have been believers for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and we're still in the position we were in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years again, you better check and see if there's an all in card in your deck. You may not have an all in card in your deck, but that's what you need based on what he said. To be all in means you'll stay all in during the transitions of life. Hey, when transitions occur, hmm, you'll either see it as another opportunity or you'll fold. You'll either face it with the Word of God and say, you know, it doesn't make any difference if you're 8 or 88. God's already been in all those years, and He will watch over me. He will protect me. He will see to it that I fulfill all my days because of my devotion to Him.